What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we are taking a closer look at this beautiful black and red system right here next to me. This is the March PC of the month. My very first full-blown Ryzen system that I've built from the ground up. Not a test bed, not just a motherboard on a box with all the things connected, but an actual full-blown system featuring the Ryzen 7 1700 processor, which is an 8-core 16-thread chip, as well as MSI's GTX 1080 Gaming Z, which features a Bend GPU, so that'll be fun to take a look at later today. Uh, we're going to be doing the full gamut of analysis, as always, including overclocking, temperatures, uh, acoustics, and, of course, gaming benchmarks. We're going to close with that. If you guys want to see a full list of specs for this PC, they are down below in the description, or if you haven't seen it yet, you can go ahead and watch part one of this video, where I take a look at all the parts individually, especially this case. This case, the Minit 5PM, has gotten a lot of comments in the last video, so I just want to mention that. that that's what this case is now, for those of you still wondering, uh, but you can actually see it in action and watch me build inside of it uh, in part one. So I'm going to link that somewhere. I probably, probably already have. Go ahead and check that out. Watch me assemble the damn thing and take a closer look at the individual parts. But let's go ahead and get started with uh, overclocking. So we've got the R7-1700 in there, which is a pretty decent an overclocker, right? I mean, it, it, it's actually uh, that chip that is almost on par in terms of performance with the 1800 with just a little bit of fine tuning, and you get to pay a lot less for it as well. So it's been a crowd favorite so far in the Ryzen series, uh, the Ryzen family, and I was actually able to take it to 3.8 gigahertz without touching the V-Core. I was doing, uh, doing a little something different today. I was going to see how far I could push the chip without actually adjusting any of the voltage parameters. So that's what we're at, running at right now. As far as the graphics card goes, we've got the GTX 1080 uh, gaming Z in there, of course, and I was able to only crank out oh about 50 megahertz on the course on the core clock because it is already pushed balls to the wall by MSI. This is like their literally like their flagship card right now, apart from the GTX 1080 Ti that's going to be coming out very shortly. So uh, only a 50 megahertz offset on the core clock. We were able to get away a little bit more with the memory clock, dialing in a 300 megahertz offset, taking us to 1,339 megahertz overall. As for the core clock, we hit a maximum frequency of 2,088 megahertz. However, once the temperature started rising under load, we saw that drop down to a more consistent and stable 2,050 megahertz, which still isn't half bad at all. Now, as you might expect, after overclocking our processor and our graphics card, we did introduce a bit more heat into the equation, but not much. So for our R7-1700, that was only hitting up to 55 degrees Celsius, and that was with an ambient temperature in my room of about 28, I believe. 28 degrees Celsius is what it remained throughout yesterday's testing is when I was doing all these benchmarks, uh, which is which is great. 55 degrees C is not bad at all, especially under load overclocked to nearly 4 gigahertz. And I gotta give some praise to that knock to a cooler doing a bang-up job of keeping thermals in check, the NH-U12S. Or is it U12S? I don't think it really matters, but it's a really fantastic cooler. It doesn't have the fattiest uh, heatsink on it, the beat sink. It doesn't have a huge heatsink on it or anything. It's only got a single 120 millimeter fan, but this has knocked to a quality we're talking about, and it can do quite a lot with not too much mass, which is really nice to see. It's also fairly quiet, as we'll take a look at in the acoustics test momentarily. Under load, our GTX 1080 hit 81 degrees Celsius at its hottest, which isn't terrible, but it's definitely the warmest I would like to see it get in these tests personally. There was no thermal throttling or anything like that, so nothing really to be alarmed of. However, it would have been nice to see a bit chillier temperatures than just barely staying within its maximum safe operating temps. Uh, but on that note, let's go ahead and talk about acoustics here. The main things to look out for, uh, the main noise generators in this system, if you will, are the case fans. We've got four 120s that came included with the chassis. There's three on the front as intake, one on the back as exhaust, and they are fairly quiet and effective at moving lots of air. Even though I was a bit disappointed at the LED LEDs not shining as brightly as they looked in the pictures, they seem to do a pretty decent job without generating too much noise. Now, I've actually wired them directly up to the fan controller, the built-in fan controller on the case. Uh, there's three levels there. There's off, which is, I'm pretty sure, zero RPM, and then we've got low and high. I've actually decided to run the fans all at the high setting throughout the entirety of today's tests, and I don't know exactly what the RPM range is on that. I would guess anywhere from 1800 to 2200 RPM, thereabouts, but uh, it's fairly quiet, so that's good. And we've also got the fan uh, uh, on the, uh, the CPU cooler. That's just running at an auto auto uh, fan curve right out of the box. We've also got two fans on the GTX 1080, of course. Again, those are running at the auto fan curve out of the box as well. So, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, here's a quick idle and load comparison temp uh, temperature acoustics test for this particular PC.
So as you might have been able to hear, the acoustic profile in this particular piece of machinery is quite good. And when I was doing my testing, which is probably, you know, the whole benchmark suite probably takes around an hour to two hours to run, um, I was basically just having this guy right next to me the whole time, obviously, without any sort of in-game audio, very, or at least very low, no headphones, just coming through the monitor speakers, and not distracting at all. I mean, even at the high, you know, fan setting, um, and everything running full throttle, overclocked, it's a fairly quiet system. And even right now, like, there are some PCs of the months where I can't do this, what I'm doing right now, where I actually have the system running Unigen Heaven in the background with the side panel off because it just is too loud and picks up on the shotgun microphone, which is, like, right there. You can't really see it, but it's right there. So, but I can do that. No problem with this particular PC, which is, uh, really nice. It's, it's really nice to see, or nice to hear, or nice to not hear. So I think on that note, ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and kick it off with some gaming benchmarks because I know you guys are really curious to see those. Uh, I tested all three resolutions here. I wanted to do 1080p, uh, 2560 by 1440, as well as 4K, even though 4K is a little bit ballsy since this is only a GTX 1080. You really kind of need a TI if you want to push over 60 FPS consistently with AAA ultra settings and all that. Oh, sorry. Got caught, snagged on the microphone wire. Um, but, uh, oh, hi, honey. I love you too. Thanks for interrupting my shot. Of course, the latest Wiggle drivers were used for today's testing. That's version 378.92, if I remember correctly. I think that sounds right. And that's pretty much it. So you guys know the drill. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the game and benchmarks to the soothing sounds of badass metal. So there you guys have the results. This system is definitely no slouch, especially when it comes to the lower resolutions of 1080 and 1440p. Again, I did mention that this probably wasn't going to be a 4K crusher, and it definitely wasn't. Uh, we actually saw less than half of the games able to push over 60 FPS on average, which is pretty expected with the GTX 1080. That being said, this is still a kick-ass machine if you're going to be gaming at resolutions lower than 4K, uh, which granted most of us are. I'd say like 98% of the population still is if not 99.9, .9, to be honest. Uh, but uh, overall, other thoughts, we did encounter some CPU bottlenecking, as I also suspected. That was in GTA 5 and I believe Hitman. We actually saw uh, the almost the exact same frame rates between 1080p and 1440p because we were so heavily CPU bound at that point. The, uh, the GPU was just running circles around our CPU. Unfortunately, the 1700 could not keep up in those particular tests, but hey, it's, uh, it, it's, it's something that happens. It actually is just, it's just what happens. It's just, it's normal. And on a side note, that's also why a lot of reviewers like to test CPUs at lower resolutions, like 1920 by 1080, or even below that, in order to expose any sort of CPU bottlenecks by making the game particularly CPU bound. Overall, getting back on track here, a very fast system. I added the parts up in my head really quick. I don't know how accurate it is, but I would say anywhere between $1,300 to $1,500 for this particular PC, depending on where you buy all your parts from and when. So overall, very formidable. Thank you, Mr. Ryzen PC, uh, for being fast and looking cool. And thank you guys for watching this video. I think this is where I'm gonna wrap it all up. So if you enjoyed it, go ahead and please toss me a like on it. It helps me a lot. And also feel feel free to leave some feedback in the comments below with what you think about this particular system. And I wanna see a show of hands. Which, which, which of you in the crowd are running Ryzen CPUs right now? I'd love to hear all about it down below. But that's gonna do it for now, guys. Also feel free to check out Bitwit Ultra. I'll put a link somewhere, uh, which is my early access ad-free channel, which is only a buck 50 a month. I know I'm selling myself a little short, but it's all the same stuff that you see on here just a week early, so go ahead and check that out. It's super dirt cheap, uh, and yeah, buy stuff in the store, all that jazz, and I'm gonna go edit this video now. So, have a good one. 
I'll see y'all in the next video. That was a really bad outro. Should I redo it? No. No, I shouldn't.